That's number four. So now number five. So here I would look for the pattern. The first derivative of e to the 3x is 3 e to the 3x. The second derivative would be 3 times 3 e to the 3x. The third derivative would be 3 times 3 times 3 e to the 3x. So it looks like the general formula is d to the i power equals 3 to the i, so d to the 57th should be 3 to the 57th power times e to the 3x. Yeah. Should we talk about this a little more? Or? Yeah. Sure. Now, first of all, you have to see the general type of problem this is. One thing we could, so remember that they told us this means they want us to take 57 derivatives, right? Um, well, obviously, we're not supposed to do this step by step. That would take too long. So the key when they want you to do something so many times is to do the first two times and look for a pattern. Well, the first derivative of this function would be 3 times e to the 3x. The second derivative would be this times 3 again. The third derivative would be this. So do these steps make sense? Do you see where I got these? Well, now, notice what the pattern is. Um, another way to write this is this is 3 to the first power e to the 3x. This is 3 to the second power e to the 3x. This is 3 to the third power. So what's the pattern? The pattern seems to be that whatever derivative you're taking, that just becomes the power of 3. So we just keep writing these down until we, until we see the pattern. Well, now we want to take the 57th derivative. So now that becomes the power of 3. Um, so yeah, for these repetitious problems, do the first few examples and look for the pattern. Notice that the way I wrote it the first time actually wasn't so good. Um, you have to be creative in how you write it. It's better to write the 3 with exponents, so you can actually see that this power is the same as the number of derivatives you're taking. Okay. That's 5, 6. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x x squared. Now, uh, what we usually do in these limit problems is we just plug in the number and see what we would get. But if we just plug in the number here, we'll get 0 to the 0th power, which you've learned is an indeterminate form. Since this is indeterminate, we can't just use the usual technique of plugging in 0. Uh, let's see here. So um, our strategy for indeterminate forms is to use L'Hopital's rule. But first of all, we need to get rid of this exponent. Well, we can do that by taking the natural log. Um, but the only way to do that without changing things is to cancel that by taking e. So uh, this won't change anything if we take the log and then raise and then exponentiate that if these are inverse functions. So this is the same as this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, it was a good idea to use the natural log because you can bring exponents down out of a log. And because the exponentiation function is continuous, you can move the limit inside. So now we just have to find this limit. Uh, let's see. This is approaching 0, and this is approaching negative infinity. But that's still an indeterminate form. So we still can't plug in the 0, because this is still an indeterminate form. So we have to write this in uh, like L'Hopital's rule. I have a question. Does it work also to take the um, natural log of both sides? Take the natural. Oh, let's set x, x squared equals y. I would take the natural log. Yeah, that's really the same thing as I'm doing. Okay. That's right. Can you uh, explain your first step? Sure. So um, we want to take the log of this because that's going to simplify the exponent. But we don't want to actually change the function. 
Well, the way to take the log without changing things is take the log and then put that to the eth power, um, because those are inverse functions. It's like squaring something and then taking the square root. It's like you weren't doing anything. So taking the log and then raising it to the eth power is like squaring and then taking the square root. Those are inverse functions. That's why I was able to put an equal sign here. This is what they're asking us for. So I have to write something that's the same as what they were asking us for that's going to be easier to evaluate. This is the way they did in the book. Uh, but if you prefer, I can use the, the y method. Maybe that would be easier to understand. So. Uh, all right. So anyway, the point is I have to put in a log, but I have to do that without changing the expression. So I cancel it out by raising it to the eth power. OK. Um, and then do these other steps uh, make sense? The log simplifies, and then we can move the limit inside the log. Um, but this is still an indeterminate form, 0 times negative infinity. So we still need to use L'Hopital's rule here. But you can only use L'Hopital's rule if you express something as a quotient. Well, x squared is the same as 1 over x to the negative 2. So we can rewrite this like this. And now it's a quotient, which lets us use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, and L'Hopital's rule says we can just take the derivative of the top and the bottom. And that'll be the same limit. Uh, well, the limit, uh, derivative of a natural log is 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. And the derivative down here is negative 2. x to the negative 3. So that's, we can take the negative 1 half out of the limit. And then we have negative 1 minus negative 3 in the exponents. That's negative 1 plus 3, or 2. So it looks to me like this simplifies to x squared. Mm -hmm. OK? Um, well, now we can just plug in the 0, because we don't have an indeterminate form anymore. So if you plug in, this is continuous. So we know that its value when x is equal to 0 is the same as the limit. So I get that this comes out to be 0. Well, we just figured out this over here. We figured out that this was 0. So I'm going to plug that in over here. Um, and now I have e to the 0, which is 1. So the answer I get is 1. Is that what you got? Yeah. 